equals three. Maybe. And that, that brings up a good point, and that's the one we're going to talk about here on the next problem. The value of the function is three, and y is three. It's the same thing. The value of the function is 3 and y is 3. That's what the value of the function means, is that y is 3. The output is 3. Okay. Um, you can see this, this function is h of x. And then we have 3, but we're doing the h of 3 part. There's a 3 where the x was. So we're almost there. We're really close. But that actually was right. Uh, you'll plug in the 3 for x? Plug in 3 for x. So what does it mean? Plug in three. No, no, no. Plug in three for x. Plug in three for x. So that's what it means. So we can do that. H of three means plug in three for x. And so I will multiply 2.25 times 3, and I'll get 6.75. Right. That's not terribly far off of what uh, Ryder has here. But what did Ryder do instead? Yeah? He kept the x where it was, and then just put 3 in, like yeah. just into the problem. Into the problem. And, and, and how did he interpret that 3 being there? This three? He wrote it down so it's being multiplied by x. So he put the the stuff that he saw and then put a three there and yeah. thought, well that must mean like multiply it all together. Okay. So what did he do? He multiplied the function by three. That's a really common mistake because h parentheses three makes you think h times 3. So a lot of times people will write the whole function out and then put a 3 there or some kind of variation of this somewhere that they're just kind of multiplying by 3 somewhere. Maybe the whole function by 3, maybe just part of the function by 3. Um, it's a really common thing. But uh, hopefully that seems like a really weird idea because we're so in tune with what h of 3 means. It means x is 3, you plug in 3 for x and then calculate based on whatever x is supposed to do. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. <coughs> okay. So Audra was supposed to find the value of x. Uh, she found it incorrectly. Um, so what was her mistake in her first step? You can see her first step was she sees this negative 6. She puts it right there. Yes, what the, the answer or uh, more uh, mathy, the output. The answer, the output, the result of doing whatever you did with x. Okay, so what was Audra's mistake? Uh, she uh, plugged negative 6 in for x. Should be um, let's say plugged in for what should negative six be plugged in for? We are going to put negative six into this equation. Where is it going to go? Not x. not going to go in for x. Why? Why? Who said why? You just said why. That's why it's okay. You should try and stand up here and tell who said why. It's very difficult. Should be plugged in for uh, y, right? Put that in parentheses. And in this case, y is represented by n of x. Okay, so remember that n of x just means the output of the function. It's what we've always called y before this. So it should be plugged in for n of x, the result, the answer, uh, 
the output of the function should be negative 6. So negative 6 should be equal to negative 2x minus 21. So we know that we got negative 6, so we, now we just solve for x, figure out what x would have to be to get an output, negative 6. So we'll add 21 and we'll get 17. So if Audra had read her instructions carefully, she might have caught her mistake. Now let's go look at them at the instructions that she was given before. And it says find the value of x so that the function has the given value. She gets down to her answer. Okay. This was her answer originally. Uh, what about that might clue her in that she did not do this correctly? Nine's not this right here. Yeah. Is not negative six. Okay, so she may have read this part of the instructions. The function has the given value, this value, right? The function should have an output of negative nine, and, and in her case, it had an output of, or it should have an output of negative six, and in her case, it had an output of negative nine. Okay. Uh, well, that's not right. That's not what that should be. Also, it says, what is she supposed to find? What does the instruction say she's supposed to find? Yeah? The value of x. The value of x. In the end, does she have the x equal something? If you follow all of, her, all of her work here, no, she replaced x with negative 6. She's supposed to find x, and then she just plugged in x. Right? You see, if she's, if she's paying close attention, she should realize that she should wind up with uh, a value for x. She's supposed to find the value for x. To graph this, Dominic does it correctly. How does Dominic know to plot this blue point right here? Because seven is the line or seven. Seven is the line or seven. So uh, basically, Dominic remembers. He's not thrown by this function notation. He sees that what we have is mx plus b. We have slope intercept. So we got a, a line intercept of seven. And where does he go from there? What's his next step? A point over one? A point over one, the slope is a one. We got a slope of one over one times x plus seven. So we got a y intercept of seven, up one over one. Let's draw another point, connect those two points. Any questions from the quiz about one more? Right? 39. The average price of a movie ticket in the United States uh, from 1980 to 2000 can be modeled by the function f of x equals 0.10x plus 2.75. Where x is the number of years since 1980. Graph the function and identify its domain range. So we'll start at x is 0. What does x of 0 mean? If it 
if, if x is 0, what's this, what does that mean in the context of this equation? This problem. Are we going to have to? Yeah. If I wanted to use this function, then if x is 0, I would put 0 for x. But I mean, in the context of movie tickets and years and all that kind of stuff, what does it mean in the, in the context of all that? Something's getting bigger. Something's getting bigger. True. Um, so along this axis are, are x values. What, does, what kind of values are we plugging in for x? Like miles or hours or dollars? Or what kind of values are being plugged in for x? Or what do they represent? Might have to read the problem again. Yeah? Price of a movie ticket. Price of a movie ticket. So um, would it usually just be like the time or the year? It is the year. It says right here in the last line of the instructions where x is the number of years since 1980. So x. This axis is years since 1980. So what does an x of 0 mean? Zero years. Zero years. Since 1980. So what year is it? 1980. 1980. Okay. Uh, what does an x of 1 represent? One year. One year. So what, what year is it? Okay, and an x of 2 means it's 1982, and it goes on and on and on and on. And according to this problem, we got we to pay attention to the problem here and, and look at the information. Where should we stop? What should be the biggest value of x that we go to? Yep, 9. 9? Why is that? That's if you go to ten, it would be nineteen ninety. But we, what years does it say it goes to? From nineteen eighty to two thousand. Two thousand. So what X should we stop at? Twenty. Twenty. Twenty years since nineteen eighty. That should be how far are we going? We should go to twenty one. Because right, it doesn't say this function works for the year 2001, just the year 2000. <coughs> um, okay. So by marking off this x axis from 0 to 20, we've answered part of just a piece of part A. Okay, part A says graph the function that identifies domain and range. What part have we determined about? We won't have graphed it until we draw some kind of a shape, like a, probably a line, right? So far, all we've done is mark out the x-axis. So we have drawn axes. That's not the graph yet. The graph is the shape that we, we draw with the slope and all that kind of stuff. So what have we identified? The years since 1980? We told a year since 1980 that we could go to. Okay, what's the relevance of that to this function? We've identified all of the x values, right? Because plug them in for x? Not, not, what we, what, not what are we supposed to do next, but what have we determined? Because the part A, we got to keep in mind what part A says. This is graph a function and identify its domain and range. We're supposed to do those three things. Graph it, find the domain, find the range. Which one of those things have we done? Well, for years would be the domain. For years would be the domain, yeah. yes. The years of the input, they're the things you put in for x. The set of all of the inputs is the domain. So we could say that the domain is what? How do we express all of the inputs? Or like one or two or something like that. 
Can we do one? Yeah. Two? Twenty? What about one and a half? Would that be? Well, anything between one and twenty. Just one and twenty. What about point five? Can point five work? Yeah. Okay, so anything between zero and twenty. So a real mathy way to say that would be uh, zero is less than less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to twenty. Let's use that compound inequality like that. All right. So now let's look at the the f of x axis, the y axis. Um, how are we going to figure that out? Does it, does it look like the price of a movie ticket is going to get bigger? Is it going to get more expensive or less expensive? Over the years. More expensive? More expensive. What tells you that it's going to get more expensive? Because the domain gets bigger. The, do the domain gets bigger, the, the numbers in the domain get bigger, but the price could drop, right? The, the prices could yeah. get cheaper. The, do the x's could go up and the y's could go down, we have a shape like that. So what, te what, what tells us, other than we know the cost of movies gets more and more expensive every year, other than that, what about this equation tells us that it's just gonna get more expensive as time goes on and not less expensive. We are 275 is a constant, right? It's kind of like where we start. And then we're only adding on after that. The thing we're adding on gets bigger. So we just keep adding on bigger numbers every year, then we must be getting more expensive. So what what's the cost of a ticket in 1980? Tells you the price of the ticket is that one, and all you need to know the price to all you need to do to know the price of the ticket is plug in the numbers or the, the number of years since 1980. Well, zero years since 1980 is 1980. We plug in zero, and we get 275. So you know, let's put a little 275 right there, and that is the cost of a ticket in the year 1980. And we, we want to figure out right now the range. So we know it starts at 275. That's the smallest price we're going to get. We already discussed how it's going to, the price is just going to get bigger. Okay. Uh, so that's the smallest value. F of x is, is y, the output. So how are we going to find the biggest price? the most expensive it's going to be. Yeah. 120 for x. 120 for x, why is that? Oh, uh, because it's in year 2000 and that's as far as it goes. Okay. Exactly right. So what do we get then? Yes? Uh, 475. 475? Uh, yeah, 475. So it's going to go up to 475. So at 20 years, we have a, a ticket price of 475. And well, that now we have two points. Can we just connect these two points? What kind of a shape should connect these two points? Line. How do we know it's going to be a line? Yeah, you're kind of describing that there's a just a a slope. Yeah. Right? 
it's only going to go over some and up some, and then you go over the same amount, you go up the same amount. Okay, good, great, great argument for it being aligned. Okay. Also, we could say this equation it looks like this: m x plus b. M x plus b. And if our equation can look like that, if we can get our equation to look like y equals m x plus b, we have the equation of a line, so we know it should be aligned. Okay. So we graphed it; it's aligned. It starts here at. 0, 2.75. That's 1980. The, the cost of a ticket is 275. And in 2000, well, I should have 20. The cost is 475. So in the year 2000, the ticket costs 475. In between, it's aligned. We identified the domain and the range. The range is from 0 years since 1980 to 20 years since 1980. And the price range is. Uh, from 275 to 475. So that's the set of all the outputs, and that's what we call the range. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah? Um, 3 3 4 3 4 Oh, we, we will do 3 4 I think I may have missed. Um, okay, so now all it says is find the value of x so that f of x equals 4.55, So just purely from a uh, function, mathematical, crunching a number standpoint, what do we do here? What is it asking us to do? What are we going to do with that 4.55? We plug 4.55 in for x. Who thinks we should do that? Who thinks we should do something else? All right. Something else, people. What's the something else we should do? Yeah. For f of x, which we can think of as y. y. Yeah, the, the output. Right. You can see what it's saying is f of x equals 4.55. If it wanted us to plug 4.55 in for x, what should it look like? Cameron? So if, if the, the problem was asking us to plug 4.55 in for x, it would look kind of like this, kind of close. We would use a lot of the same letters and parentheses and all that kind of stuff. But what would it look like if it's telling us to plug 4.55 in for x? Yes, 4.55 would be in the parentheses in place of x. Okay, And just saying that kind of like, oh, that makes sense. 4.55 is in the place for x, so I put 4.55 in for x. Right? But it's not in for x, it's in for the result, the answer. 4.55 equals 0.10x plus 2.75. That's right. We solve these kinds of equations so often know that we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to take 4.55 minus 2.75. Right? Once we've done that, what will we do next to solve for x? Divide by 4.10. Divide by 0.10. 18. Okay, so x is 18. So just from a purely mathematical, pure mathematical standpoint, we made the output of the function be 4.55 and found the value of the input that gives us that output, right? But what does that mean in the context of the problem where x is years since 1980 and f of x is the cost of a ticket? What does x equals 18 mean? 18 years. 18 years since? 18 years since when? 1880, or 1980. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 1980. So what year is that? What? 1998. 1998. Okay, so in 1998, 
What? In 1998, the ticket cost 455. We could write that all out. That would be the answer to part B. What's the what is the meaning of that? In 1998, a ticket cost 455. Okay. Um, Bridger, what do you say? 30. 34. 